Hey Aries, it's Mama TPG with One Love, One Light Tarot. Welcome to your love story. So I'm going to get started with the animal spirit to get your energy. And then I will do the your connections energy. And then the energy of the relationship. If you are single, then um, it's whoever you have in mind or it may not resonate with you. Um, if it doesn't resonate, then I would check out uh, your sun, moon, rising, or Venus, or your connection sun, moon, rising, or Venus, um, and see if you get the advice you need there. Um, also, I intend for the your energy to be the closest to the camera, and then the far energy is your connection, and in between would be the relationship, but it can flip-flop. So let's see, spirit guides help us. What is the energy? What is the love story energy for Aries? And we get the fire ant, and I do see this as you. I mean, it can flip-flop, so take it how it resonates. But the fire ant is, you know, very on task, um, has a purpose and is very um, focused on work, um, very thoughtful about considering how things will affect everyone, if that makes sense. Um, but when they're angry, obviously they're very aggressive. Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right. So let's get the energy of your connection. Okay. And we have the nightingale. This is air energy. So you could be dealing with the air sign. Doesn't have to be, or this could be you. Um, the nightingale is, you know, always what comes to mind is the singing, right? But this is showing like, um, moon energy and like deep. Okay. So I feel like, um, this is someone that is very creative, um, but can be over emotional or, um, and so this could be you or this could be your connection and we'll read the descriptions. They're really beautiful in the book. But let's get the energy of the relationship. And we have the frog. This is water energy. So I'm getting, you know, kind of both of you can be um, very emotional. And then the frog energy comes out when there's a need for cleansing. So it's kind of like that talk that needs to happen to really... Um, share and be truthful about your emotions, clear your conscience, clear your emotional cachet, if you will. So let's read what it says about the fire ant. And I do apologize. Um, these are not in alphabetical order and do not have numbers. So sometimes it takes me a minute to find them. So, okay, so the fire ant. Aggression, rigid thinking, following orders. Fire ant energy flares up without us noticing. It's the force that attracts us to people and situations that feed our imbalances rather than those that counter them. Gossiping and blaming are a few indicators that misaligned fire ant energy is at play. You may also find yourself stewing on a person or situation, only making things worse. How can you break free from the drama and cool down? Fire ants are surprisingly sensitive. Don't pretend the heat isn't getting to you. So when in balance, thoughtful and disciplined, when out of balance, argues, excess heat and gossips. Okay, so that could describe you, Aries. I mean, and maybe you're in the good part of the fire ant energy. Um, but there's always, you know, looking at both sides in order to, um, to stay balanced, right? So what is the nightingale talking about here? Let me find that. Uh, okay. All right. So the nightingale, fearless voice, speech, communication, or song. The song of the nightingale is otherworldly. This simple brown bird, almost unnoticeable among the flashy plumage of other birds, transports its listener to the realm of poetry. 
Nightingale energy is with us when we write, compose, and especially when we sing. It reminds us that music heals the deepest wounds. This card indicates a need to open the bridge between the heart and the voice. Is there something you need to say? How long has it been since you sang? Turn it up, write it down, and let it out. When in balance, sings, speaks freely, freely with kindness. When out of balance, shy, and a lump in the throat. To bring into balance, music. So I definitely see that this this could be um, you or the connection. And there's a, when you get focused on practical matters, you know, day-to-day -day stuff, and you don't have a creative outlet, I'm, and it could really be singing for your connection or you, but I think what they're speaking of is that creative outlet and that being able to express their emotions in some type of creative way. And so let's see what this frog energy is talking about here. Frog, frog, here we go. You guys are lucky. Some of the other readings, it took me forever to find them. Okay, so frog, clearing, cleansing, healing. The frog and the water element are almost inseparable. The frog spends its first months of life entirely within this healing element and then emerges to rest on land. But no matter how earthly the frog becomes, it, its need for cleansing and rejuvenation is regular. Frogs tend to become overworked and undernourished, so it's vital that such sensitive creatures practice self-care. This card serves as a reminder that water helps us cleanse, forgive, and release. Time to dive in. Frogs aren't meant to carry a heavy load. When in balance, clear energy and enthusiasm for life. When out of balance, depleted, running on empty. And to bring into balance, lake, river, ocean, or bathhouse. So I feel like, you know, there's definitely a need to um, kind of purge together in a sense. It could be separately and then that's what's going, you know, maybe separately there's a need for this like emotional cleanse or it's something that you can do together. I guess it depends on exactly how this applies to your situation. All right, so let's go ahead and pull some cards to get the love story here. What is the story of this fire ant? And like I said, this could be you or this could be your connection. I do see it as you because it's fire energy, but like I said, I just dropped a whole stack of cards. Okay, I got them all. All right, so let's get the story here. Let me shuffle one more time since I dropped all those. All right, frogs, stay up. Let's see. I don't know how I made it stay up on the last reading, and then now it doesn't want to. Come on. Come on. Well, whatever. All right, so what's the love story for the fire ant from their perspective? Okay, so we have judgment. So I feel like this is definitely um, the fire ant, this relationship and whatever they're going through right now has a whole lot to do with their life purpose. And this is, you know, angel intervention. This is um, looking at the deeper meaning of something. And I feel like it is the relationship. We have Ten of Pentacles, so this is a long-term commitment, and I see the fire ant as being completely invested in this relationship, and I see it as a marriage, more than likely, with Judgment and Ten of Pentacles here, or a life partnership. And then we have Son of Pentacles, and when I'm looking at this, um, you know, the this is the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is you know, all about trust and it can be about, um, you know, kind of your guardian angel. Um, it, it can be about having that, you know, like fail proof plan of just taking things one step at a time quite slowly. But this particular version, this Knight of Pentacles is looking down and sometimes they say, you know, keep your head down and keep moving forward, but there's a sadness here. So we'll look into that. All right. So the 
judgment card can often talk about reunions, rebirth. I mean, this is like, you know, after death and then, you know, rebirth. So there could have been a major transformation that's happened, um, especially, I'm going to say within this year, um, you know, maybe it was having to spend a lot of time together because of, you know, the lockdown or whatever. But um, there's definitely um, a new phase for this relationship. Um, so with judgment, when it comes to romance, this is usually talking about a reunion. And this could have been the opportunity to reunite because of both, you know, working or not really making time for each other and then forced to kind of make time, you know, we're stuck in the house together. So now we're forced to face each other and kind of get to know each other all over again. Um, and then the Ten of Pentacles is really about harmony and balance and, you know, that um, give and take equal balance relationship. And then the Knight of Pentacles is sometimes talking about um, when, in regards to romance an offer of some sort. But I do see this as already like a, uh, a life partnership or marriage. Um, but if it's not, then that's what's coming. And at least that's what this fire ant is looking at is like, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. All right. So what's the story with this nightingale energy? Okay. We have the star. So it could be an Aquarius that you're dealing with. Um, being that's an air sign and the star came out. What else do we have? We have the high priestess. Okay. Could be a water sign or Virgo. And then we have the sun. What a beautiful set of cards to come out together. So the star is all about faith and healing and spiritual guidance and destiny. Um, very beautiful card. The high priestess, we're talking about you know, secrets and intuition and, and uncovering those secrets within. And then the sun is all about clarity and positivity, the most positive card in the deck. So that is how this nightingale is looking at this relationship. So romantically, the star represents like the divine favor of this relationship. Okay. So that is, that's really what's bringing me to this marriage. It's like, it's already been blessed, if you will. So the high priestess is talking about possible secrets. So there could be, I feel like there's something emotionally that this nightingale hasn't been sharing. And that's what needs to happen here. And it could be, you know, a lot of times if we're talking about divine feminine and divine masculine, you know, a disconnect from their emotions because of not being, you know, um, aligned with something to creatively express their emotions. And then the sun is really talking about that sweet, sweet love that, um, that's fun and inviting and bright and cheery. Okay. So let's get the story of this frog energy. This is the actual love story between the two of you. And we have the two of pentacles. And I love that they use the butterfly because um, this is about, you know, manifesting something that is going to be life changing. Um, we have the father of swords again with this Aquarius energy. So you definitely could be dealing with an Aquarius. What else? And justice. Well, an air sign nonetheless. So Libra or I'm going with Libra or Aquarius, possibly a Leo. We have the sun here um, or a water sign. Okay. So the center of the reading is this father of sorts. So I feel like 
this is where clear communication needs to happen, clear focus of where the relationship is going. And, you know, this isn't clear, right? This is kind of juggling and and not making each other priority. This can also even mean like debating whether the relationship should go on or someone having to choose between two. And I don't really feel like that's what's happening here, but that's how it could appear to one or the other. Okay. So it's about having that crystal clear come to Jesus moment where you are absolutely honest with yourself and with the partner. And that's what's going to bring about this ultimate balance within the relationship. All right. So let's look at, we're going to use the Beyond Lemuria to see what soul lesson this relationship was meant to teach you or is meant to teach you. It could have, could have not been happening yet, but. And we have fire. Solaris Sublime. All right, so let's read the book about what it, it's about looking at what you're truly passionate about is what I'm feeling right off the bat. But let's see what it says in the book here. Fire. And I absolutely love these cards. They're just gorgeous. Um, this is about duality, creation, kundalini, the rising phoenix, bringing conflict into harmony. And I think that's what we're mostly talking about. Intensity, transformation, <clears throat> excuse me, the incredibleness of being alive, coalescence, and infinite energy. We live in a dual, dualistic world of light and dark, yin and yang, masculine and feminine. Focusing only on light can repress our shadows. Bringing both sides into balance and being real with our humanness allows us to reach more jo Theodore! Theodore! Stop. Sorry about that. Allows us to reach more joy, authenticity, and depth. By accepting and loving all of ourselves as we truly are, we can extend more of this love and have deeper compassion with others. This painting portrays the balanced dance of creation. The greater the distance of separation, of duality, the greater the density. As the dragons come together, they dissolve into one with all that is in this place of coalescence the fusion br brings both sides together in oneness not just as a re-merging with the universe but in an alchemical alchemical process of becoming the empowered creator force we truly are so the theme is passion motivation destruction power illumination determination inner light, forging forward, and transformation. And I feel like all of those things that I said the theme could all be talked about right here. So this is the sum of all of the story. That's beautiful. All right, so let's look at what each of you may be working on separately as far as soul lessons go. What is the fire ant energy working on? And we have money, find a way to abundance. And I feel like, um, I feel like what's, what this is really talking about in this situation is not, it's find a way to define abundance more clearly because working, working, working does not always bring about abundance, right? Right. What, how do you define abundance? Sharing with others, is that where you really need to um, define that abundance? So that will be different for all of you. What is the nightingale working on? And we have children. Know that your children are protected. This kind of looks like the strength card for me, but it's also about that inner child work. This could be about um, working on parenting skills, or this can also be about, um, you know, I'm getting almost that 
this is part of your life purpose, whether you have children or not. So it could be working with children. It could be, you know, already having children be the light of your life. Whoever the nightingale is in this love story. Very awesome. All right. So what is next? What is next in this love story? Spirit, tell us what's next for Aries and their connection. We have the lovers coming together, that true commitment, if not already married, definitely making the plans to um, move forward with that. That's what I'm seeing here. And two of wands, progress, yeah. So this is about seeing that future with each other. And the four of pentacles, so... You know, this goes back to the money here. So this could be, you know, some, so many uh, relationships fall because of the fight over finances. So it's like, get that defined with together, not one person or the other defining. And then there is some compromise that needs to happen with finances because in most relationships, one person is a spender and one person is not. I mean, um, ideally, so you can try to balance each other out, but there is some compromise that may need to happen. But I don't see any major negative like roadblocks within this relationship. It's quite beautiful. All right, so let's get a guardian angel message to close this out for Aries. Where are we at? 22? Okay. It's about right. Okay. So we have healing. Listen to your heart. Love is the greatest healer. It has the capacity to balance and heal your emotions, thoughts, and perceptions, which in turn will heal you physically. Your angels are here with you and will help dissolve your fears. Trust in the power of love to guide you and your life will magically transform. This card is confirmation that healing is occurring right now. So I feel like this cleansing and healing is what's going to kind of take this relationship to that next level, whether it's, you know, already a marriage, but it's about bonding, deepening that connection. If it's not a marriage, I feel like that's where it's going. That's where it's headed. Okay. Um, so yeah, those are the messages that came through for you, Aries. Gorgeous reading. Um, let me know in the comments how this uh, resonates for you. Remember, the universe has your back and so do I. Take care.